Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to talk through some of the best bits in Microsoft Project. What I'm going to look at is how to create a task list, how to link a task list, how to add a resource list and allocate resources, and then how to save a baseline and track a project. And lastly, how to create a report based on your project. So first of all, a simple task list. Now, when you first open project, depending whether you've modified it or not, it may look like mine. I've added a few modifications. The first one is this view bar down the left hand side. If I just right click on mine and you can see down the bottom there, you've got view bar. I'll take it off. This is what you normally have when you first get Microsoft projects. So if I just right click there, you can tick view bar on and then you get the main views there listed and any views that you go into from any of the other areas so if I go to the view tab and other views if I select different views from more views they will then appear in this bar down the left hand side so that's the first thing I do the next thing I do is make sure I've got this entry bar across the top here so that I can make quick adjustments to edit a title or whatever you want to edit now that is in options so i need to go into options to get that so if i go file options and then it's on display and then you need to tick this on where it says entry bar and that will appear for you so that's that one now while this box is open another feature i want to do is make sure that every new task in all my projects are set to auto schedules which they are because i've already done it so again, you come into File Options, Project Options, but this time you need to go to the Scheduling option or the Schedule option. And then down here, you've got the option there, New Task Created. And then you've got these two options. The default is manually scheduled, but I want them to be auto scheduled. And I'll show you the difference in a second. And then that needs to be set to all new projects, not just this project. So you set that first, all new projects, and then you set that afterwards and then it will be done for you so that's what I've already done and I set that as my defaults all the time in project now what is the difference between manual and the auto scheduling option so if I just um, do a task here and put it to manual and just type task a you can see it just does the actual task name nothing appears in these other columns and if I leave this one is on the default task B it automatically puts in an estimated duration a start and finish date based on today's date or whatever date of the project is now this project file I've opened is an old one as you can see there July 27 uh, 22nd of July 2022 so I'm going to change the start date to the project and this is a, a thing that you need to do if you're not going to start a project on the day that you open the file so when you go file new, it will always start the project on the current date. And let's just get rid of some of these because they're in the way. And highlighting them down the rows, this is the best way to delete tasks and just press delete and it all goes. So on the, uh, not the report tab, on the project tab, you've got project information. This is where you can change the start date of a project. So I will do that and set today. That's the start date. 2nd of January 2023 and you've got options in here to say whether this project runs from a start date forward or as a finish date and comes back the main difference there is the default task types would be as soon as possible for this one and as late as possible for that one which basically means if you had a a project that was ending in August 23 all new tasks would come onto that wherever that date was and then they'd work back from that date with going from a start date it will always start on this date and that sometimes is the current date and then work forward so I've just changed that there that's how I want it I'll click OK and then you can see the timeline has changed there to reflect where we are in terms of dates so 2nd of January there we are that's it so now I'm going to create some tasks when you first open project it usually defaults to a Gantt chart view which is this so this whole thing is a view 
within the view you have tables and this is the what's called the entry table now if I go to the view tab and show you different tables because there are many and you can see there look you can create your own tables there's lots of tables I've created and the option there is just to save save the columns that you may enter as a new table and then it, and have it sitting up here but this is the default cost is the one that's above it and that just shows you different columns same tasks just different columns of information if we go back and put that into entry you can see that so you have a view and then you have a table part of that view and each column in every table has a drop down filter similar to excel if you do excel filters like so but what I'm going to do now is just quickly create a simple task list and show you how it all works. So title is going to be develop strategy. And then just a few tasks. You see the auto scheduling kicks in there where it's giving me the duration. This is going to be a summary task, so I'm not going to type a duration just yet. But I'll just do the list first and explain how it all works. So the first main task is coord teams and I'm just going to come down train staff I'll just do about five tasks um, then we'll go for design product and test product market and then sell product market product sell product now the detail that you put in here is totally up to you, but what you've always got to bear in mind is that somebody has to do the admin on these tasks. So that could be, trained staff could have a load of subtasks underneath it. You, you could list them, but sometimes you don't need to list them. If they're already preset processes that people know about, you can just mention it, train staff, and then in there you can embed a document that says, this is a method, a method statement for training staff inside the task itself, and I'll show you that later on. Now, I want to indent all of these underneath the title, so I'm just highlighting them like that, or I can highlight them like that, and then on the Home tab or the Task tab, that's the default one, I'm going to use um, Indent, you've got Outdent and Indent, just to indent them in. Now, Microsoft Project is a scheduling tool, it was designed as a scheduling tool, and it likes to do the scheduling. It doesn't really like you to change the dates, although you, although you can, but when you do do that, it makes it slightly more important than the other dates. So what you should really be doing is not changing the summary date, because that's going to summarize all the durations underneath. So if I say Quad Teams was five days, it defaults to days, but you could put months, years, weeks, five days. I'll say that's two days, three days five days five and then five again and it tells me there that i could have pulled that down like you can in excel but it usually tells you when you have finished it means you can just get this little black cross in the corner and pull it down if it's the same duration you can see as i did that this gantt chart started populating i'm just going to move this curtain across a little bit this is not the technical name but i call it a curtain just to pull it across a bit to give you a bit more view on that side so you can bring it all in so at the moment this whole project is taking five days now I'm going to put a milestone at the end of that a milestone is some sort of management checkpoint so I'll just call it end of phase now milestones in projects are represented by zero duration like so now it's sitting on the second now if that was the end of phase it would have to go after the end of this last task I'm going to do links next, but I'll do it right quickly now. I'm just going to type in there that it's going to follow 7, task 7, just so it goes into the right place. So it goes into the right place with a little arrow. And you can see how it moved across there. So that's how I want it to look. So we've got our durations. We've got our tasks set how they want to sit. Now, if I want to display some information on this Gantt chart, because at the moment there's nothing on there, just the bars, there is a bit of information on the actual milestone. If I double click on the white, I get this bar styles box coming up. I'll just close it off for a second. If you can't remember to do that, or sometimes when you double click, it creates a, it does that, it creates a task accidentally. Don't want that. 
if that's happening to you, what you can can do is just go up to the Gantt chart format option, and then you've got this format button where you've got the same thing, bar styles, and the same box comes up. So that's an alternate way of doing it. What I want to do though is I want to go down to the bottom here where it says text. Now by default, every time you add a task, the resource name, if there were any, there aren't at the moment, would appear. What I want to go there is the task name, and that is just naming this project software. These are all the fields you can have. I'll just type name, and that will put the task name. You can see there's lots of information, different symbols up here with the description, what it's all about, and you can add your own up there as well. As you get a bit more into this, you can really fill your boots with all this sort of stuff. I'll click OK to that, and then you can see the actual names of the tasks are now appearing on the Gantt chart. So that's great. That's what I want. Now I need to link up this little project plan to make sure it's actually representing what goes on on the ground. So I've got their core teams and trained staff. Can I do that at the same time? Probably not. So coordinating teams is the first task. And then trained staff, I'm going to say it has to follow on from that. So I'm going to put two in there. So that follows task two. That's task two. And you'll see it move across there like so. Now, train staff, that, I'm going to say that has to be completed before you can design the product. So that's going to be a follow on as well. So in there, I'm going to put for design product, I'm going to put a three just following on. This is obviously quite time consuming. Di design product. Now, test product. I'm going to say that that can start in, in the middle of this. We don't have to wait until the whole design phase is finished. So how am I going to tell it to do that? So let's do four, first of all. So that's that's what that's what you'd put if it was going to follow on. But I've said it can start in the middle of this. So I'm going to put what's called a bit of lead time on there. Now, lead time, if I double click into this, you get task information coming up. Um, we're doing um, predecessors. So that's what I've just done. So I could have done it in this box, but this is a longer way of doing it. You've got a lag column. Lag is delay, lead is what we want, which is a minus. So if I put minus 2D in there, watch what happens. Click OK. That's coming back. And the arrow's going back and round like that. I don't actually like it looking like that. It looks a bit weird. So I'm going to change the actual link type. So these are all follow-ons at the moment. And notice how it's put FS in there because I put some information other than just the number. So you only need to put FS, which means finish to start. One task finishes before the next one starts, which is what these are. That must finish before that one starts. You only need to put that in, because that's the default, if you're going to qualify it with a lead or lag time. Now, I'm going to double click into this again just to show you what else you've got in there, because under type, that's the default, you've got three other options. Start to start, finish to finish and start to finish so you've got these other options that you can use now I want to use this option start to start if I cancel this for a minute because I know I can type this now so instead of 4FS minus 2 I'm going to go 4SS plus 2D now watch what happens here so that's where it's sitting at the moment so it's now the start of this is dictating when this one can start you can see the arrow, but it looks better. It looks tidier. Now, test products. Now, I can't market products. We can't market products really until we've tested the product works. Or can we? Can we just do it maybe near the end of that? So let's just go for a six. Let's see what that looks like. Not six. Five even. That's a follow on. So maybe I can just pull that back a bit. Let's try that one. So if I go and do the same sort of thing. So if I go this time, I'm going to go five SS plus four. Let's see what that looks like. D. Yeah. Okay. Like that. 
but I'm happy with that. And, and if these links don't work, you should test these links. If these links don't work, you just do a different link and make sure it's accurate. That's the key. Now, sell products is going to be a follow on for definite. So that's going to be a six. We don't sell in it before it's complete. So that's following that on. So that's now how we want our little project to look. We're happy with that. We've got the durations. Now, the, what triggers this whole project? I'm going to insert a task at the top. And let's say that you need a purchase order to trigger this project. So I'm going to insert, right click on number two, insert task, and then PO, RX received. PO received, a milestone, zero duration. And then this first task is going to be an SS on that. So I'm going to go to SS. So basically, I'll just come back a little bit. Getting the PO is what drives the whole of this project. So if I don't get that PO, nothing happens. If that PO is delayed, if I pick it up, I just push it to Thursday, say, everything will be delayed until Thursday. I'm just going to do Control Z to bring that back. So that's how I, I want it to be. I want it to work like that. Now, if this end of phase has to be set at a specific date, so at the moment, based on the durations and the links that we've done, this is saying it's the 1st of February. Let's say this should be the 1st of March. I could... Oh, no, let's go back a bit. Let's make it go wrong. So let's, let's say it should be the 30th of January. If I go in there, double-click on there and go Advanced, you've got constraints in here. If I say it must finish on and then you put the date in there so this is going to cause a problem i'll say the 30th of jan okay you say it must finish on constraint and affairs this could result in a scheduling conflict so i'm going to say continue okay and it's now coming up with a will it will cause a scheduling conflict so what i should really do it is is cancel that and think again so I'm just going to cancel it now if I want that to be on the 30th I'm going to have to reduce some of these durations so if I pull this back to three days and that to three days it's still short a bit and I'll pull that to four days so now I should be able to do it if I go back into there double click on it so must finish on the 30th of January OK. This could, but not will. So I'm going to continue. OK. So then that's just giving me a day slack. Now you get a little indicator in the information column telling me that I've got that constraint on. So that's great. So that's all set up. Now, basically, if this whole project is delayed, say a couple of days, now what's going to happen you get the planning wizard coming up and saying this action will cause a scheduling conflict. You've got two options, cancel, think again or reduce some of these durations or continue and reset that constraint. But for now, I'm just going to leave that as it is because we need to allocate some people. So to allocate people, resources, let's go to the resource sheet. Down here, you've got four buttons. And this one is the resource sheet. I'm just going to add a couple of people. Um, Bill, Ben and Bob, easy to type. Now what you've got here is a load of information that you can fill in if you want. I'll just give you all of these £10 an hour, £15 overtime, highlight the two and then you can pull it down like you can in Excel. So just a simple resource list uh, for this little video. So we've got three people, they're all work, so you've got three types in there material cost but we'll leave this on work so hours per eight hours per day is the default so that's what they're set to now if i go back to the gantt chart i can start allocating tasks now you've got lots of different options where you can do this so you've got drop down arrow there where i can tick these on you've got the option of double clicking into a task and going to the resource ta uh, tab and then picking the person you want we'll just cancel that again how I prefer to do it though is go to the resource tab and assign resources. I like this because this box floats 
and you can just click on a task if I click on a task you can see it's changing the information up there so I'll start on core teams you don't put resources on milestones there's no time time on a milestone so let's say core teams is going to be all three of them so I sign that train staff is going to be all three of them so I sign them again now what we're looking for here is making sure we don't over allocate anybody so design product let's just say Ben assigns designs the product so just Ben test the product will be Bill sign Bill everything's looking cool at the moment I've not got no over allocations and uh, marketing product let's say all three of them market the product sell the product is going to be Ben so according to this everything is okay nobody's gone red so you would have a red indicator there if somebody was over allocated if I go back down to the resource sheet they would also display red there so everything's okay so you just need to watch out for that I am going to just make them go red so I'll just do a task at the bottom here just to make somebody go red so you can see what I mean so task A, so task A there is at the same time as that task. If I put, I'll use this option this time, if I put Ben on there, immediately goes red in those two tasks and you've got to sort of work out where that um, over allocation is. Now there are some other views you can go into to see that. If I come down this side here, you've got lots of different views that I've already created. You know, you can, these are mine and down the bottom there, you've got, task usage if I go to that one and you click on task A you've got Ben there you've got core teams there so task usage is not really what I want resource usage is probably a better one to have a look at and find it that's resource form next one down resource graph is also a good one that's resource usage yeah, so that's showing the actual resource, in this case, Ben, and you can see where the clash is there because it's got 16 hours on that date. So if I go back to the, the Gantt chart, what you can use now is a feature called resource leveling, which will fix this, but you can't just do it without looking at what the computer does. If I go into resource tab, I'm on it, you've got level all, level resource. So in this case, I just need to level resource and select Ben. And then level now and let's see what happens so it's just shifted task a into a place where ben's not allocated so that's just pushed it to there now there is a view that you can have a look if i go to view other views and then more views it's called a leveling gantt so if you look for leveling gantt in here it'll tell you where a task started from and where it's moved to so you can see there You've got pre-leveled task and then it's moved to there. It's a very simple example of what that does. So you can't just let everything just shift without knowing where, where things went to and where they came from. So that's the leveling Gantt. Now I'll put that back on there. You can see the leveling Gantt view has now appeared in this view bar. So that's there for you. And I'm just going to delete this off at the bottom. I don't want this. So now we're okay with this little project. What I want to do now is just pull this back a little bit. I don't need to see that actually. So I've got my Gantt chart there. I want to save this as a baseline so that I can then start tracking my project's progress. So to save a baseline, you're going up to the project tab and you've got set baseline there and set baseline again. You've got 11 baselines, including one that's one to 10, but one that hasn't got a number, which is a default one. So I'm just leaving it on that. And then what that will do is it will capture information such as start and finish dates, duration, resource allocations, even work that's been com partly completed and things like that, time phase work, it will, it will save that information. Click OK. So you only really save a baseline when your project planning phase is finished and you're ready to rock and roll with your project moving forward. So that's now saved. So any changes I make will now be reflected against that line in the sand, if you like, that I've just saved. Now, there is a different table and a different view that I would recommend you go to to work your project once you've set it up. So this entry table and the default Gantt chart is great for getting things going. 
but once you've done that you probably want to get into the the tracking tracking gantt so if i just go up here and go down this list because it's probably quicker i want the tracking gantt there's a tracking gantt what you get on the tracking gantt is the percentage complete and you also see a little baseline marker which is the plan so at the moment we haven't updated anything so everything's just the same now the table part of this there is also a tracking table which i'm going to change over from the view tab and go to tables and then tracking and this gives you this information now you've got actual start actual finish percentage complete etc i'm just going to edit this table a little bit because i think you need a few extra things in here because i i want to know what the planned what the baseline start was so i'm going to insert a few columns here so insert column i right clicked and then i want baseline start so just type baseline start that one so that gives me when the planned start was insert column again baseline finish baseline finish and baseline duration now this is just my personal preference you may have a different option but there's lots of different fields here look that gives me so i've now got a snapshot here of what the planning was and the, and the way it works is this i'll just move this across you can get rid of some of these fields so i don't want that column I'm just going to get rid of that press delete it just hides it it doesn't actually delete it and then you're ready to go with your updates so let's say um the milestone went ahead at the correct time so i can go 100% um, complete on that like so and then that will just fill the dates in for me automatically as soon as i did that the start date and the, uh, the finish date completed as soon as i did 100 percent now the rest of it using 100 percent and the percentage complete is not the most accurate way of um, updating a project plan because if you say everything is 100 percent complete it means that all the durations and the and the um, work allocations were exactly as you planned and that's highly unlikely so it's more accurate to go for the duration or even hours worked even more accurate but for this example, I'm just going to go for the actual duration. So Quad Teams was meant to take five days. Let's say that it took actual duration took four days. So we did we did better. Now it's gone to 80% because it thinks there's one day left. Now to tell it that we did better, you need to go to zero days left. And then you can see the difference on your Gantt chart there. You've saved a day. Now this train staff was meant to be two days. Let's go the other way now and make a bit of a mistake. So let's say that was three days. That's just going to fill it in and then you've, you've pushed your date back again. So at the moment we're on target, but you can see the, the, clock in, the clock ticking up for the actual cost of this project as we're doing this. Now design product was meant to be three days and it was meant to start on Wednesday the 11th and it's meant to finish on Friday the 13th. But let's say it was late finishing so this time instead of doing the duration i'm just going to say instead of the 13th it was a week late so that's now that's now gone to eight days and i've gone way past the the, the plan at the end there now let's say test product was meant to be three days but we actually did that in one day actual duration one day it tells me i've got two left put that to zero i've pulled back two days there and market product was three days let's say we only did that for one day as well we pulled that back two days i'll put that back to zero and so on and so on so you just fill it in like this now this is not a, an ongoing thing that you would do every single second of every day as soon as the task is complete unless you've got loads of admin people this is something you would set aside to do maybe on a friday every once a week or on a monday once a week and you would just go through it like this but it is it's nonsensical to type in 100% and just drag it down a big long list. If you've done that, you want to be questioning yourself as why you've actually listed that as a task. If it's just going to be pulled down like so, you want to just think about it a little bit. And project is a very accurate tool in measuring how well you are doing against a plan. It will not measure that very well if you're just doing 100% all the time. Now, while you're doing all of this, this is where the report side of project kicks in so this is nearly complete this project i've got to go to 281 percent complete but if i go up to the report tab and show you some of the reports these are the preset ones so if i go down into project overview it just tells you that you're 81 percent and stuff like that and what's coming up next 
I'll go back to report uh, dashboard you've got cost overview gives you a bit more information and then if I go back to report you've got resources over allocated resources we haven't got any resource overview so remaining work for Ben he's got that left and you can see the baseline work there look so these are all very useful reports and you can create your own so let's do that so we'll go for a new report I'll just do a blank one I'll call it uh, data for because I can't think of anything else to put click OK to that there's your title and then I want a little chart and I want this chart and it automatically defaults you to give you the overarching summary data so you've got down the bottom here filter or active tasks lots of options in there no group level one now if I go to all levels you'll see what happens it's just going to show you all the tasks so actual work remaining work and work planned so if I move that over there I'm up that's okay if you haven't got too many tasks that's not too bad if I bring myself under the little chart on there I'll have that one I could have that side by side like that so I've got both best of both worlds now if I bring a third chart on if I click on the other one this one just shove it down the bottom somewhere let's you've got the top here I'm on tasks you've got resources there's the resource or the resources now you might want to add fields there so we've got actual work remaining works so let's add a look have a look at adding baseline there's a little arrow if I expand that you've got baseline work so it's put an extra column in there so there are lots of fields in this area and sometimes it's a bit overwhelming trying to find things it's not the best I don't think if I collapse that out of the way you can see the lists you need to expand different bits of it um, now if I bring back a if I do another chart you don't have to do charts you can do tables and things like that if I just do one more and then um, if I go to I'm on task category time this is giving you a time scale and then you can edit the time scale to be in whatever you want really so it's in days at the minute but if I put that to weeks and I'll click OK to that it doesn't look as bad you can expand that it's not as cluttered should I say not as bad so this form now is going to react dependent on the changes I make in my project so if I go back to the task tab and go back into the Gantt chart view and then I want to have a look at a report I'll go back there and you've got custom data and there's my report still sitting there ready to rock and roll back to the Gantt chart and if I go to the um, tracking Gantt again which I've already edited this is where I'm working you can see everything there now I didn't save a second or third Gantt chart because there's only a small number of tasks there but you've got that option there as well and you can then use those fields or you would have to use those fields. So this is just a very quick video of how Microsoft Project works. Hopefully it's been of use. I'll thank you for your time and I'll catch you in the next one.